Hello students. Today we are going to deal with the text War, which is a story written by Luigi Pirandello. War comes as part of the first module of the text Issues That Matter. And the first module looks into the details of war, the consequences that war brings on people. And this particular story, War by Luigi Pirandello, talks about the impact that war has on families. Let's look at the author first and then move into the details of the story. Luigi Pirandello was an Italian dramatist, novelist, poet, and short story writer. He was awarded the 1934 Nobel Prize in Literature for his almost magical power to turn psychological analysis into good theater. He was an Italian nationalist and he supported fascism in a moderate way. And a great example of his support to fascism was that he gave his Nobel Prize medal to the fascist government to be melted down for the Abyssinia campaign. As Italy entered the First World War, Pirandello's son Stefano volunteered for service and he was also taken as a prisoner by the Austro-Hungarians. The story war also talks about a family who is sending their son for the war, to be part of the war. So it can be assumed that Pirandello's own um, experiences of sending his own son for the service and uh, having witnessed his son's imprisonment, uh, he would have taken this theme as the main idea of the story. So we can say that there are elements of realism in his works. His major works include six characters in search of an author, The Pleasure of Honesty, The Late Mattia Pascal, The Trap, Loves Without, Without Love, The Outcast, and so on. Coming to the story, War. The story is set in a stuffy and smoky second class carriage of the night express from Rome to Salmona. And it happens at the Fabriano station in Italy. We understand that the story uh, is set during the First World War, and Italy had entered World War in the, 19, uh, in the year 1915. Let's come back to the setting again. So this is a train station uh, at Fabriano in Italy. And uh, the entire story happens in a second class carriage of this night express, which goes from Rome to Salmona. In this story, we see a few characters who, uh, who are actively involved in conversation. So in the beginning of the story, we see a husband and a wife. They board the small train carriage and uh, they join the five other passengers who uh, are already in that uh, second class carriage. And we see that the woman is presented as a large bulky woman and she is seen to be in deep uh, sadness. Okay, she's mourning. And uh, some of the passengers, they help her in and make room for her. The husband also seems to be very considerate about his wife and he inquires if she's all right, but she does not answer. And he explains to others that their only son is being sent to the war in three days and they're going to see him off. And later we see the conversations that happen between the other passengers and this particular couple. We see that each of the passengers, they talk about um, their sons being part of the war and uh, you know there happens to be a small uh, argument between each of the passengers because they all want to prove that their grief is the, is the greatest one. So towards the end of the story, we see a fat old man. Uh, he gets into the conversation and he says that uh, children belong, don't belong to the parents. Children have interests of their own. They have love for their country and they gladly fight for it. And then as he talks about that, he, he also um, talks about 
his own son, who before dying, uh, had sent a message to his father uh, saying that he was happily dying because he could serve his country. Now, the other passengers also agree with this person and the wife of the couple who entered the train, who could not be consoled by anyone till now. She finds strength in his words. She listens closely as the old man gives details of his son's death, of the heroic death of his son. And the wife, as if she is shaken from a dream, says to the man, then is your son really dead? This question evokes a lot of emotions in the old man. He looks at her, tries to answer, but he can't. And we see, we see him uh, weeping uncontrollably as if he just realized that his son has been dead. So this is basically the plot of the story. Moving on to the characters, we see that the couple, the husband and the wife, are the first ones who are introduced to us in the story. They are attention seeking. They want sympathy. That is exactly the reason why the husband feels the necessity to tell the other passengers uh, the reason for their grief. The husband is presented as a tiny man, thin and weakly, and his face death white and his eyes small and bright and looking shy and uneasy. So husband is a very sh small man. And in contrast to the husband, we see the wife as a bulky woman, a large woman. And uh, it is um, said that she was put into the train as uh, just like you put a shapeless bundle into something. So the couple, when they tell the others the story about their son, they, they tell them that they have only one son, a boy of 20 years, and um, they had sacrificed everything that they have for the boy. That's exactly the reason why when he went to Rome, they also left their place in Salmona and went to Rome to be with him. So he was enrolled as a student in Rome, and then he had to volunteer for war in six months' time. But then on a short notice, the son is informed that he has to leave early. That is the reason why the couple are sad. That is the reason why the wife uh, is in deep mourning. Now the other character is the passenger one, the first passenger, who talks about his son, uh, who has been at, from, at the war front from the first day. We see another passenger, passenger two, who talks about his two sons and three nephews at the war front. And he says that the paternal love is not like bread that, can't, that can be broken into pieces and split among the children in equal shares. He says that a father gives all his love to each one of his children without discrimination, whether it be one or 10. So the second passenger, he says that the number of he has sent two sons to the war front and uh, he feels double the burden of anyone else uh, in the train uh, carriage because parental love cannot be divided, he says. And uh, a father's love towards a son, towards all of their sons or all of their children are equal. They cannot be divided. They are not like bread which can be divided and, and distributed. So he says that because his two sons are there at the war front, he is suffering double the grief or, than the other passengers. Moving on. We have the third passenger who is presented as a fat, red-faced man with bloodshot eyes of the palest gray. It's said that his bulging eyes seemed to spurt inner violence of an uncontrolled vitality which his weakened body could hardly contain. And as he proceeds with his conversation, we understand that his son is dead and he tries to normalize the loss of his son by, uh, by intellectualizing his son's sacrifice. And he is successful in enlightening the fellow passengers with regard to sending their sons for the war. And his explanations are very interesting. He says that when children become 20, they have to follow their interests. They never belong to the parents, but they belong to the country. And 
he also puts another important um, metaphor uh, to talk about patriotism. He says that if country is a natural necessity like bread of which, uh, which of us must eat in order to die of hunger, somebody must go and defend it. So he says that the country needs to be protected and you need to send your young ones to the war. And he talks in detail about the uh, son's last letter that he had written to his father, uh, saying that he was dying satisfied at having entered his life in the best way he could have wished. Having looked at the characters, we will now move on to the title. The title is very simple. The title is War, but we can interpret it in two ways. The first one is the physical war, which is the first world war. So we see that all of the passengers have their children, have their sons sent to the war, to the first world war to be fought uh, at the war front. And the second one is, the, uh, is something which is internal. The passengers at war with their own feelings. So war can be metaphorical in that sense. And the title also suggests that the impact of war is not only on those who are at the war front, but also for those who are left behind. We see that none of these passengers who are in the train, neither the couple nor the passengers one, two, three, none of them are actually at the war front. But because their sons are at the war front, they suffer a lot of grief. So the impact of war is not only for those people uh, at the war front, but also for those who are left behind. And we see that there is no mention of an actual fight. Even though the title is war, we don't see an instance of war happening anywhere. But the presence of war is overpowering. Moving on to certain themes that we find in the story. The first theme is patriotism. We see that all of the characters, all of the characters in the story, they exhibit strong patriotic feelings. You see that no one even suggests that the sons should not have to fight the war. Every one of them, they are, they are sad that this, their sons are not at the war, but every one of them agree to the fact that our, their country needs to be defended. We also see the old man, the passenger three. Uh, he explains his sorrow by saying that a parent's love for their children is simply greater than their love for the country as evidenced by any parent's willingness to take their son's place at the war front. And on the other hand, a young person loves their country more than they love their parents. So here again, the, the old man is presenting uh, another hint at patriotism. That is, uh, each of those passengers, we see that each of them uh, say that they would gladly uh, take the place of their son in, at the war front. So they don't want the war to be war not to be fought. They don't want their sons uh, not to be sent. But somewhere within them, they feel that the country should be defended. So that sense of patriotism can be strongly seen in all of the characters. And he points out that he's um, the old man points out that he's speaking of decent boys. So maybe they've all heard of young men who try to get out of their duty and the, they are disgusted by the thought or, or they're too indecent to uh, the old man tries to convey the sense that a, any decent boy in that country would fight for the war because they love their country more than they love their parents and then he also speaks of his son as a hero who died for the king and the country and everyone else listens and congratulates him. So we see that patriotism is one important theme that we find in the story. Second one is parental love. Now the grief that the parents experience in sending their children to harsh um, and uncertain situations, that is the evident emotion, that is the overpowering emotion that we see in the entire story. And one of the passengers also says that Parental love or paternal love, love of a father to a son, is not like bread that can be broken into pieces and split among children in equal shares. And uh, each of the parents in that story 
they say that they suffer for the for the uh, for having to send their son to the war so we see the parental power is another strong emotion that overpowers the entire story another one is intellectualizing emotions which can be seen as a defense mechanism we see that here the old man uh, denies or old man exhibits a denial to accept the fact that his son is dead he avoids dealing with his grief by intellectualizing over the death of his son he claims that young people would not want their parents to cry over them because if they die they die inflamed and happy moreover he says that dying young prevents their children from seeing the ugly sides of life so these are the different ways in which he intellectualizes his son's death number 1 he says that young people would not want their parents to die because they are dying for a noble cause second one he says that the young if they die young they don't have to see the ugly sides of life number 3 he says that um his son his own he he talks of this incident of his own son uh had his own son's uh, letter before he died and he builds that uh, argument based on the letter and he says that his son has died happy in having to in having to uh, in having uh, been able to perform uh, his duty successfully in having in being able to uh, you know sacrifice his life for the country so he narrates or he presents his son as a hero here so intellectualizing emotions is another defense mechanism that we find particularly in the old man the passenger 3 we also see that there is an attempt to cope with the reality for the fat man it is intellectualizing emotions for the woman it is some kind of motivation from the other passengers we see that the uh, the woman is said to have uh, listened to all of them but she is not consoled by any of their arguments and finally it is when this man says that his son also was dead um on the at the war front she gains consolation from the experience of that fellow passenger and the other passengers their attempt to cope with the reality is by speaking about it so all of them exhibit different ways of their um, of coping with their feelings and the reality so the story we so in the story we looked at basically the characters we looked at the setting we looked at the plot and we also talked about the prominent themes that we find in the story one is the uh, theme of patriotism we also looked at paternal love we also looked at intellectualizing emotions and the different defense mechanisms that or different attempts to cope with reality exhibited by different characters in the story thank you